Hey everyone, welcome to uh, AP Gov Five Stream, um, the first we've had in, since uh, before the the winter holidays. Um, and this is kind of a special one. We actually get started with um, our live streams again next week for the spring semester. Um, but this is one we decided to do because there's just been so much going on in the news in the last week around the impeachment and around uh, Iran. And there's just like so much that is happening, especially like when you look at Twitter. Um, if you believe everything that you read on Twitter, like people are ready for World War III. Um, and really, A, the situation is way more complicated in, than that. And B, the situation is kind of um, intense, but is not as scary as that. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening in the impeachment and what's happening with Iran and a real short 30-minute like update. Um, as I go, please feel free to ask me any kind of questions that you have. I'm more than happy to uh, to dive into this deeply because, you know, I'm a political nerd and I like watching and keeping track of what's going on. Jump in. So we're going to start with the impeachment um, because the impeachment is um, kind of in a lull right now and doesn't have as much um, going on as what Iran does. So here's the, the skim on this, Okay. Um, President Trump was officially impeached uh, by the House of Representatives on December 18th, 2019, becoming the third president in the United States history to be impeached. Uh, the first being President Andrew Johnson in the 1860s, the second being President William Jefferson Clinton in 1999, and then, of course, President Trump. A lot of people are like, well, I thought Nixon was impeached. Um, well, he probably was going to be impeached. I mean, the House was getting ready to do that process, but he resigned before it could ever happen. Okay. And of course, I'll throw in there, no president has ever actually been removed from office. And because this is an AP Gov uh, podcast, I'll just, or it's not podcast, excuse me, because it's an AP Gov live stream, I'll also throw in there a little bit of content in that, remember, impeachment does not mean removal. I feel like I have to be uh, a broken record on that one. Impeachment does not mean removal. Impeachment does not mean removal. Impeachment does not mean removal. Because that's what everybody thinks, including the adults in the world who are just not really civically well educated. So all an impeachment means is that um, evidence has been found to show that there has been wrongdoing um, and possibly, you know, that the, in this case, the president has broken the law. And so the House just votes to affirm that they are uh, impeaching on, on those things, okay? And, of course, the Constitution says you can be impeached for a couple things, including high crimes and misdemeanors, um, treason, and uh, obstruction of justice, okay? So the House of Representatives, uh, the Democratic majority, and uh, voted for impeachment of President Trump for two different articles, one on abuse of power and one on obstruction ju of justice just prior to the uh, holidays on December 18th. A formal House inquiry um, led by the House Judiciary Committee found that he had solicited foreign interference in the 2020 election um, and that he obstructed the inquiry itself by telling his administration officials to ignore subpoenas for documents and, and testimony. Um, and then just to, to recap this, although I'll say that there's also, um, if you go into our AP Gov page on, on here, we also have done one um, prior to this on the impeachment that you can go back and find more things like with the Mueller investigation and all that. Um, basically, the uh, this all began back in August um, when the president um, was charged because there was a whistleblower who said that he was listening or she was listening, we don't know, uh, that name never has been released, to a conversation between President Trump and the Ukrainian president where President Trump basically asked for quid pro quo, which means you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, where he said to the uh, Ukrainian president in no uncertain terms that, hey, if you investigate uh, Joe Biden's son, who was involved in some contracts with uh, Ukraine, some legal stuff, he's an attorney, um, we'll uh, release the, the money that Congress has set aside for aid to Ukraine, okay? And basically, the president denies that quid pro, quid pro quo, um, but Democrats, after extensive interviews and um, testimonies and review of documents, disagreed. So the impeachment vote in the House was strictly on party lines. Every uh, Democrat voted yes, uh, and every Republican uh, uh, voted no, okay? Um, uh with there was a uh, one non-voting uh, member on that as well too. So at that point, the president um, 
will have been actually impeached, okay? So then what happens, okay? The House doesn't get to decide whether or not the president's removed. If that was the case, then President Trump probably would be looking at removal since the House is controlled by the Democrats. Um, but that's not the constitutional role of the House, okay? Um, so what happens now by constitutional law is that the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, who you see uh, there, she's a Democrat from California, the first female Speaker of the House in American history, is to send those articles of impeachment to the Senate. And the Senate, by constitutional law, has to conduct a trial. There's no option for the Senate not to conduct a constitutional trial. That was also a misnomer that was out there. A lot of people were like, well, the Republicans control the Senate, so they don't have to have a trial. Mm, nope, 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 nope. Even though the Republicans don't want to have the trial, and even though the Republicans have control of the Senate, um, they, by the Constitution, have to still have that trial, okay? So um, what will that look like? Well, by the Constitution, which outline, outlines the entire thing, the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, who is currently John Roberts, will come to the Senate chamber, and he will see um, or oversee the entire trial. The senators serve as just a 100-member jury, and it's actually two managers, okay, that's what they're called, managers, who are two members of the House, who no doubt will probably be Democratic members of the Judiciary Committee, who then prosecute and present the articles of impeachment around President Trump. Um, the White House then will also appoint, appoint defense attorneys who will argue the president's side. It's just like a trial in the Senate. Um, the president could attend if he wanted to. He would be the first president to ever do so. And I really just don't foresee that that happening with uh, President Trump. Um, so if he was impeached by the House on December 18th, why hasn't there been a tri trial yet? Well, so Nancy uh, Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, has said um, that Senate Maj Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who's a Republican from Kentucky, must publish the rules for the Senate trial before the impeachment articles would be sent to the Senate. Because basically she wants to see um, witnesses allowed in this trial, which the Republicans really are not interested in allowing for a lot of different reasons, but the big one being that they feel like if they hear witnesses, it would be uh, some of those witnesses might share things that are pretty incriminating for the president, uh, and that would not look so good when they go to vote. Uh, and all of them vote to acquit, meaning not to to remove him from office. So then, where are the, the impeachment articles now? So uh, Speaker Pelosi still has them uh, and has yet to send them to the Senate. So a trial has not been set. And really, there's no movement here because McConnell is sticking to his guns and Pelosi's sticking to her guns. Eventually, she's going to have to relent and send those over. And I think that um, I haven't looked at the latest polling data, but when you look at some of the, the polling data that's been conducted in the last couple of weeks, um, a majority of the American public wants to see those uh, articles of impeachment sent over. And so I think that you'll probably see the speaker renege um, and just kind of give up on the get trying to get the witnesses and she'll send those over. I, you know, I actually would suspect um, tomorrow on Friday, the last day of the week, that you could very well see her send those articles of impeachment over, which would mean that a trial would probably begin next week, depending on how quickly the Senate wants to, to work. OK, um, so that's really the holdup right now is that, you know, the Democrats want witnesses. The Republicans are saying uh, no. Just the other day, after meeting with his caucus, the members of the Republican Party, um, Senate, or excuse me, Speaker, uh, Mc, huh, now I'm getting it all mixed up, Senator McConnell, what I said the first time, announced that he does have the vote to set the trial rules without any kind of Democratic votes, um, without um, uh, without uh, witnesses, okay? Um, he, there was a question around that because even though the Republicans control the Senate, uh, there are a couple of Republicans that are moderates or are in districts where their seats are not necessarily safe um, and want to make sure that they appear like they are granting a fair and full trial for the president. So like, for example, um, uh, Lisa Murkowski uh, is a Republican moderate, and she's been one that's been pretty vocal that she wants to see a, a fair trial happen here. So what happens next? Well, we just wait. Um, I would say, like, like I said, you know, within the next week, you'll see those articles sent over and then there'll be a trial. I really, you know, this is my own opinion. Um, I don't think that 
he will be removed from office. I mean, I guess there's some infinitesimal small chance that he could be, but um, I really don't see the Republican majority and the Senate removing him from office, um, no matter what the, the evidence is. Okay. Um, and then does anybody have any questions around the impeachment? There's lots of crazy rumors out there. I saw some, some idiot, uh, because there's just no other nice way to say it on Facebook the other day saying that, well, because of how this whole thing's going down, that gives President Trump the opportunity to run for a third term. Like what? <laughs> like what? Why do people believe this random stuff? And the bad part was, is the person that shared it was a teacher. And I'm just like, oh, God. No, the president doesn't have an opportunity to run for a third term. It doesn't matter if he was impeached, if not impeached, whatever. Nobody can run a third term anymore um, because... You know, we have a constitutional amendment that stops that. Okay, so now let's talk about what's going on in Iran, which is probably the events that you're more concerned about because you've seen all sorts of crazy things on uh, Twitter in the last week, like hashtag World War III. Don't worry, I've seen them too. So let's get a quick uh, timeline of, of what's really happened here in the last week, okay? So on December 31st, um, supporters of Hezbollah, which we uh, label as a terrorist group, in the United States, stormed the entrance of the United States Embassy in Baghdad, chanting death to America, and the demonstrators smashed their way onto one of the reception areas and set it on fire. No one died uh, on either side, um, but of course that was seen as a, a you know major threat to the United States. We have flashbacks to the Obama administration when something similar happened in Benghazi, Libya, uh, it, but people there did die, including the United States ambassador. So on January 3rd, uh, the president ordered a United States drone strike in Baghdad, uh, uh, in the airport there in Baghdad that killed Qasem Soleimani, um, who is basically the number three guy in Iran. Okay. And if you know anything about Iran, if you've studied, studied the government of Iran, at the top of that uh, structure hierarchy is the Ayatollah. Um, who is a religious leader as well as a political leader, because remember, Iran is technically a theocracy. Uh, and then below the Ayatollah is the president of Iran, and then below the president is the, the person that's over the armed forces, which in this case is Soleimani, okay? So he was really um, a high-ranking uh, general from Iran and a high-ranking man in Iran with close links to a network of armed groups, which we all classify in the United States as terrorist groups, um, backed by Iran, okay, all across the Middle East. No doubt the man was responsible for thousands of American deaths during the um, invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, and no doubt the man was a bad guy, okay? The question, though, became why did the United States uh, have to do this? Typically in um, foreign affairs, um, what typically happens is what's called proportional response, okay? So um, I'll, I'll give you the example of what I mean by proportional response. This is actually what I told my students in, in my class the other day. Let's say that I go to the teacher's classroom next to me, okay, who I would never do because I love the teacher that's next to me. And um, I take off her desk, um, uh, she has a whole bunch of like Hello Kitty stuff. So I take a little Hello Kitty statue off her desk and I take it and I slam it to the floor and mash it, okay? Because I don't like her. And then I just leave the room, okay? Well, her response, if it was proportional, would be to come back to my room, okay? Take the um, LBJ presidential bobblehead that's on my desk and smash it on the floor. That's proportional. They're both equal. But in this case, if um, what I did represented Iran, where I went to her room and smashed a Hello Kitty, and she represented the United States, when she came back to my room, she actually took the Mac that's on my desk, the $2,000 brand new Mac that's on my desk, and threw it out the window. Okay? That's not really proportional to the response. I killed her like $5 Hello Kitty thing, she just threw about out my five thousand uh, dollar Mac outside the classroom window. Okay, not really proportional here. Okay, so this, of course, the president is chief diplomat. He sets foreign policy. He's also commander in chief. He sets uh, what the military does, and so he, no doubt, um, heard a variety of retaliatory measures that he could take from his um, generals, and he went with the killing of um, Soleimani. So it really is not considered proportional um, 
Not that the guy's not a bad guy, okay? That, you know, whether or not he should be killed, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Um, but the gist of it is that he was killed by us and a drone on uh, January 3rd. On January 7th, two days ago, Iranian forces launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles against two military bases uh, housing U.S. military personnel in Iraq in response to the killing of Soleimani. Nobody died. No U.S. military died. No Iraqi military died. They basically hit an empty hangar at this airport. Okay, So that was the Iranians' response to it. Um, now, what the Iranian state media told their people in the country, um, you know, that they killed a bunch of Americans or, or whatnot, I don't know. Okay, January 8th, yesterday, at lunchtime, President uh, Trump uh, addressed the nation, and he said that the Iranian strike caused no American or Iraqi deaths, despite claims by Iran's Revolutionary Guard that dozens of U.S. troops were killed. He announced that there would be new sanctions on Iran that would be imposed without offering further details. And he basically said that Iran had stepped down, okay, meaning that the United States was really victorious in this. And, and basically the president saying it's over, or at least the threat of a, a major war seems to be over in the meantime. Today, um, uh, news came out that a Ukrainian airline, uh, 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 just a passenger jet, um, crashed earlier this week, which we knew, we had seen that, um, shortly after takeoff from Tehran's airport in Iran. It now appears, this is the part that came out today, that the Iranians mistakenly shot down the plane, thinking that it was a, a U.S. Uh, plane or missile. Um, however, they are denying that. Um, but they killed all the passengers on board, many of which were Ukrainians. I don't believe there are any U.S. citizens. There were Canadian citizens that were on board. And, of course, the Iranians are denying um, the United States access to that black box and the plane as well as Boeing, which is the manufacturer of that plane. So that's kind of the timeline of, of what's been happening. Now let's kind of dig into um, some of the who's, what's, and how's behind what, what's actually going on here. So what's happened over the last couple of years between Iran and the United States? So probably about the time that most of you guys were being born or when you were really little, Iran started its own nuclear program. Um, and Iran claimed that that nuclear program was to produce energy and for medical experiments and things like that, okay? Um, however, much of the world, including the United States, was very nervous that Iran would be using that program for to produce highly enriched uranium, the same type that you would use to produce a nuclear weapon. And so we placed all sorts of sanctions on Iran, but after years and years and years of diplomacy, President Obama... Um, was able to orchestrate a landmark agreement, uh, a treaty between Iran, the United States, and several European nations that basically got Iran to say, okay, we're not going to enrich uranium at the level which you need to for a nuclear weapon. We do still want to have a nuclear program for those other things, but we will allow international inspectors from the IAEA to come in and oversee this process, yada, yada, yada. President Trump never was a fan of that uh, treaty. He didn't feel it was uh, hard enough on Iran. And so he actually, right after coming into office, pulled us out of the uh, Iranian agreement, which really ticked off a lot of the other out European allies who had signed on to that, as well as um, Iran. And the president put more sanctions on Iran. Well, these sanctions have uh, killed Iran's economy, which is what brought them to the negotiating table the first time with President Obama. Um, and they felt a lot of pressure from their own people. So then we have, over the last year, seen a lot of aggression between the United States and Iran. Um, uh, different things in the Middle East have happened with oil, um, with oil tankers, with um, oil refineries in Saudi Arabia, um, with some airstrikes that have killed U.S. contractors. And, of course, it all kind of overboiled on the 31st of December with the um, storming of the Iraqi embassy or the U.S. Iraqi embassy. So who are these Ukrainian backed militias who President Trump blames for attacking U.S. troops, who are the ones that uh, attacked the U.S. embassy in Iran? So um, from 2003 to 2011, in the heart of the Iraqi and Afghanistan war, the Pentagon spent billions of dollars training the Iraqi army. Um, but when ISIS attacked Iraq in 2014, the U.S. trained army collapsed. So with ISIS approaching Baghdad, the call went out to form self-defense groups, militias. 
Um, Iran, with ISIS also approaching its borders, and they were not really that thrilled with ISIS either, um, armed and trained some of those militias, okay? Now that ISIS is basically a thing of the past, um, many of those militias have become what we classify terrorist groups, um, but all across the Middle East, uh, Iran has has trained all sorts of militias that are causing all sorts of problems. Hezbollah in Lebanon, um, some of the ones that um, are supporting um, Bashar al-Assad in uh, Syria, um, uh, the Houthi rebels in Yemen, they're all uh, trained by Iranian Revolutionary Guard as well as backed financially. Um, so even though it's not Iran technically that's carrying those out, it's them who are, are backing that. So who was uh, Qasem Soleimani, okay? And why is this assassination significant? Well, like I said, okay, he's number three in Iran. He was the head of the Revolutionary Guard as well as also head of the Quds Force, which kind of think of the Quds as their elite military group, it's kind of similar to like our Navy SEALs, okay? Um, he had... Uh, a very high approval rating, about 83% approval rating in Iran. Um, and so it's basically as if the United States had, uh, during World War II, um, a foreign nation had, had assassinated uh, Eisenhower, um, who was our Supreme Allied Commander. So it's a big deal. And then why would the United States want him dead? Well, basically because he's behind the... Uh, training of many of these militia groups that have uh, cla we've classified as terrorist organizations. President Trump actually classified him as a terrorist. Um, and so we have seen all of those um, problems and basically say, you know, he's the head of many of these um, problems, so we're going to cut off the head. So what's Iraq's response been? On Sunday, Iraq's parliament voted to um, basically oust foreign uh, governments from the countries and foreign forces, which basically means the United States, okay? Now, a timeline has not been set up for that. Um, the timetable, ta how that's going to happen, what that's going to look like has not. We have a couple thousand troops in Iraq, and so it looks like at this point Iraq's going to send us out because they were not happy with the assassination that we carried out on Soleimani. What about Iran's nuclear program? Also on Sunday, the Iranians basically announced that in, um, you know, as a result of everything that's happened, they're no longer going to follow that uh, nuclear deal that they had signed with uh, President Obama because they still were following parts of it with the European nations who were still on. And they were now going to um, have advanced centrifuges to enrich that uranium at, at those levels. So could Iran have nuclear weapons? Sure, but not in the short term, okay? It's going to take years for something like that to happen. Hopefully, we'll be able to get Iran back to the negotiating table. We'll be able to stop that without any type of, um, you know, military intervention, et cetera. But, well, that's, you know, TBD. And then what will our Iranian retaliation take, you know, look like? There, there's not going to be a World War III unless some – pretty crazy, crazy, crazy things happen, okay? Which, especially with the events of the last couple of days, really does not look um, likely. You know, they launched the ballistic missile attacks the other night, which I would really say was just Iran's way of saving face. They lied to their people and said they killed all these people. They really didn't. Their people don't know any better because the media is controlled by the state. Um, and so it, I just don't see a war happening. Really, at the end of the day, could they understand that the United States military could wipe them out very, very quickly, okay? Um, but at the same time, we understand in the United States, or at least I hope we understand, that a war with Iran is not just a war with Iran. Um, even though Iran is really a loner on the world stage, um, as, as, as I told my students, if we would actually launch a war with Iran, where we're using missiles and destroying sites, especially you saw the thing where the president tweeted about destroying <coughs> 52 different sites, including cultural sites, um, if we did that, um, I would be um, really surprised if countries like Russia and China didn't start to provide some sort of assistance to Iran, whether it's military or not. Right now, Russia and China are basically staying out of it. They're not really close friends with Iran, but they're not enemies either. But if they start to see an imperialist United States overreaching militarily, uh, that might change. Okay. 
Um, I think that what you will see is more reactions of Iran in the Middle East. So you saw the you saw the uh, uh, action that it took the other day, but I think a lot of those militia groups across the uh, the Middle East that we consider terrorist groups are probably going to cause a lot of problems for us. The bigger thing, though, is the cyber attacks that um, Iran has done in the past and probably will ramp up. Okay. In the recent past, their state-backed hackers have targeted banks in the United States, casinos, the city of Atlanta, uh, and a dam just out in New York City. Um, these are, are big deals, and this is something the United States is not prepared for, that many have called on Congress to, to take action to beef up our, our cybersecurity, uh, especially around the grid, what provides us with electricity in the United States. Our grid is incredibly antiquated and not super well protected. Um, and so that is a is a problem. OK, so World War Three. I don't think you guys are going to see a World War Three. I don't even think you're going to see a regional war, at least the way that things sound. Um, the president the other day in his speech, I actually thought it was a pretty good speech. Um, and was, he, he was pretty rational and calm um, and seemed pretty level headed on things. And so I would expect um, that hopefully. Um, the worst of the escalation has passed at this point, and now we kind of, you know, move forward. We're obviously going to put more sanctions on them. Obviously, relations with Iran are not going great, um, but hopefully we'll be able to come back to the table or at least stop it here without um, many lives being lost. So that, my friends, is what's going on with the impeachment and with Iran. If anybody has any questions, I'll stick around here for about a minute. <clears throat> I'll be more than happy to, to answer those. <clears throat> Just stick them in the chat box if you have any questions. Oh, yeah. And Zoe, your comment on the um, APUSH students <laughs> having to write DBQ on this. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, I also often think about that one day on DBQ, probably in 30 years from now, um, there'll be a DBQ where one of your documents will be a tweet from this president, um, which is kind of funny, but at the same time, um, it's just how history has unfolded. And I think that you very well will see social media in the future on DBQs. Well, friends, it doesn't look like anybody's got any questions, so I hope that helped you understand what's going on. I hope you guys will be able to join us on Monday for a weekly current events and election update, and then Tuesday for our foundational documents review. See you guys. Have a great night. Bye.